This is the Morning Swim Show for Tuesday, May 25th, 2010. I'm your host, Peter Bush. In the Finis Monitor today, we'll talk to U.S. Olympic swimmer Mark Gangloff. Then we will announce our performance of the week. It's somebody you may have never heard of, but the swim was about as impressive as any we've ever heard. Well, first, let's get to Mark Gangloff. He just swam at the Masters Nationals in Atlanta. One last hurrah for the high-tech suits. And Mark joins us right now in the Finis Monitor from Auburn, Alabama. Mark, welcome to the show. How are you doing? It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Is it nice to throw on that fast suit one more time? You know, it was it was actually kind of weird putting it on. It wasn't really, you know, for a while there just putting the jammers on. I could get ready 10, 15 minutes before my race. And it was hard to go back and do a whole preparation and have to put my suit on 30 minutes before I race. Well, now that you've gone back to jammer swimming primarily, was it even more... Were you even more cognizant of just how much faster those things made you swim? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it was, they, they helped out a ton, and I never really wore it during the short course season too much uh, because none of my main meets were short course. And so I really f felt how much it helped off the walls, especially. So off the walls, just like, kind of helping you glide out, or what, what specifically? Yeah, I mean, I think gliding out and then th through my pullouts, uh, you know, I could keep my pullouts quite a bit longer and keep my speed. So I, that's where I felt it most, was, you know, pushing off the wall and then uh, on, actually just on the down pull of my um, pullout was much longer. So what do you do with the suit? You just uh, you, you frame it or you, know, you just uh, throw it in the trash or put it in the drawer just in case you ever want to pull it out again? You know, I, I, I'm going to keep it around. I don't know if there's any training uses for it that I can use later. You know, just uh, maybe, it, you know, you know, racing above race pace. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to, I'm certainly not going to throw it out. How was the meet? I heard there were close to 2,000 swimmers there. That sounds like a difficult warm-up, warm-down warm situation. You know, after coming off the Charlotte Ultra Swim, the warm-up, warm-down situation wasn't quite so bad. Um, but there was a lot of people there, and the meet was, uh, you know, very long. Um, but there was a lot of, you know, really impressive swims. Um, you know, Rich Abrams, Abrahams uh, doing 22 in the 50 freestyle as a 65-year-old man. That's uh, That blows my mind. Well, thanks for giving away our performance of the week there, Mark. Oh, Appreciate oh, I didn't it. Know. <laughs> All right, well, you know, you were paying attention. I can appreciate that. Hey, um, are you... You're volunteer coaching at Auburn still, correct? Correct. And, you know, you're on the national team, so you get some sort of stipend from USA Swimming, but, I mean, you're a guy with a wife and a kid. I mean, how do you support yourself? Uh, well, you know, I do a lot of swim clinics, both with uh, Josh Davis and Mutual Omaha Breakout Swim Clinics, and then the Fitter and Faster Tour with Arlo Promotions. And, you know, that helps out a ton. You know, the, the stipend helps, you know, getting that every month, and then, you just have to find out and be creative in ways to make money. Um, uh, so any way you can do a swim clinic or a speaking engagement, you know, big or little, you just kind of got to keep yourself constantly working throughout the year. Yeah, and USA Swimming is talking about this athlete uh, partnership deal where you guys would get a bigger stipend, but you'd definitely have to give away some personal rights and go do more stuff for USA Swimming. I mean, how do you and some of the other swimmers feel about it? You know, it, it's... The details are, are you know, uh, not set in stone to what we have to give up exactly. So that's, I think, where everyone's apprehension is. You know, $50,000 obviously would be a big relief off my personal shoulders uh, to be able to have that and have that for a year. Um, but until we know exactly what we're giving up or what our responsibilities are to USA Swimming or uh, I don't know if it's to their sponsors or just within uh, their programs, um, until those details are really hashed out, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Sure. Now, at, at Auburn, uh, I hear you got some international guys training there right now, some Italians and Brazilians. Yep. Yep. Are they going to be down there for the World Cup? Because things could get a little feisty. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how long the Italians are here. I know that Caesar's been gone since his nationals and Henry Barbosa. Uh, Enrique Barbosa has been gone for a little while, so uh, I, I, I know that, I don't know that I don't think the Italians are staying that much longer. Um, but I know Caesar will be back for a little while, and he'll, I think he's going to be here through Pan Pax. Um, so, but we have a great group. It's been a fun 
uh, exciting. You know, getting new when you drop new people in there like that uh, kind of gives the, the entire group a little bit of a stimulus. Yeah, everybody wants to you know show them what they got. Let them know who they're dealing with, right? Bring your A game every day. Hey, that's good training motivation. And you're going to go to the Mari Nostrum series, right? Uh, actually, I'm not. I was uh, originally planning on doing it. Uh, I'm doing a small meet in France on the 20th of June, and then the week after that is the Paris Open, so I'll be sticking around. Uh, actually, I'm going to go over and train with Fred Busquet in Marseille for about a week, and then head over to Paris and train in the, and uh, race in the Paris Open. Is it tough for you to leave now that you've got a baby daughter at home and your wife Ashley, you know, you kind of leave her uh, hanging out yeah, with the baby? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the, you know, about two weeks after she was born, I was over in uh, Manchester, England doing the duel in the pool, and that was really, really difficult because my flight got delayed coming home. It took me an extra 48 hours to get home, and so I was really missing her then. And um, I'm pr we're pretty lucky because Ashley's actually going to come over to France, so it's going to be a little vacation for her and I and Ashley's mother's actually going to watch the baby. Oh, that is definitely a good thing. Holy, we'll take that, right? Holy cow. I, I am in the exact same boat as you. I think your daughter's like three days older than me. I'll take a vacation, give the baby to Frank for, uh, for a weekend anytime I can. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Mark. Well, thanks again for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. That's Mark Angloff joining us. He kind of gave away the performance of the week, but we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. With, uh, there's one other race we want to mention. We'll be right back. Hello, ladies. Look at your man. Now back to me. Now back at your man. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. But if he stopped using ladies' scented body wash and switched to Old Spice, he could smell like he's me. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're on a boat with the man your man could smell like. What's in your hand? Back at me. I have it. It's an oyster with two tickets to that thing you love. Look again. The tickets are now diamonds. Anything is possible when your man smells like Old Spice and not a lady. I'm on a horse. Mark Ganglov just mentioned the stunning 50 freestyle swim of 65-year-old Rich Abrams from Colorado. He clocked at 22.10, but he also had a phenomenal 100 free swimming a 49.42 at age 65. Congratulations, Rich Abrams. You won our performance of the week. And that's it for the show today. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to... Keep your head down at the finish.